friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We have a fairly unique project today. Uh, it's, it would be the same as all the others, except for the fact that we're going to approach this totally differently. We have a Washburn mandolin that has a loose brace on the base side uh, under, the, uh, under the sound board, of course. And uh, so it's obviously it's on the inside of the instrument. There's a there's two braces that run down the length of the top. One is on the treble side and one is on the bass side. The bass side is uh, popped loose and it's quite a ways from the top. So you know the ordinary way to fix this really would be to take the back off and get in there and fix it. A uh, lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of money because it takes a lot of time. Well, this is the quote-unquote beater mandolin for this particular customer. It, it's a mandolin that, you know, he's got several mandolins, and this is the one that he drags around outside and to camp, camp outs and things, and he doesn't really care, you know, how I fix it as long as I fix it. He says, I don't care if you drill holes through the top. Well, little be known, that's just about what I'm ready to do. So here's a different way to fix this problem, much cheaper way and much faster way. That is, if all goes well. Show you my tablet screen there. I'm on the inside of the mandolin with the camera and you can see here is that brace running down through here and this is the top of the mandolin up here and you can see there's a big crack there. Uh, also a big, looks like a big chunk of glue there that I can't really get the camera on. There it is, there it is. You can see that big chunk of glue and run out of here on the top. So when they glued it in there, they, didn't, they weren't real careful. It, there appears to be glue on top of the brace too, which is not a good thing. So, you know, this may be a futile effort. It may have already been re-glued. Somebody may have poured glue on the inside and just swished it around trying to think they were gonna glue that or something, I don't know. But it doesn't look, that really doesn't look like a factory job. I can't imagine the factory being that sloppy, although they might have been. Who knows? Um, so, and if we get back here, you can kind of see there's more glue, and it, it comes quite a ways back that it's not attached. We always do the simple thing first, and so the simple thing is to try to fix it from the outside, and uh, especially since he wants to save money on this and not spend much money. It may work, this may be a total fail, but we're gonna give it a shot. Here we go. Well, since we started the video out looking at the inside of the mandolin, here's what the outside looks like. It's a washburn, dots in the fretboard. It's got a very dark finish. Almost looks like it might've been refinished even. Very dark finish. And like I said, this is just considered this fellow's kind of beater mandolin. And so we're going to do the quickest, fastest thing we can do to fix it. My effort in the simplest form is just drill a tiny hole straight through here, straight through the brace. Take this little jack I have, put a wire down through there, run the wire out here, tie a nut on the end of it, pull it back through. That nut will pull the brace up. I'll just tighten it up with this and just just tighten it right up. It'll pull it right up there no problem whatsoever. It's got plenty of force. So it'll pull it up there and uh, it, you know the, the hardest thing will be to get glue up under that brace from the from this thing in here so we'll have to make a specialty paintbrush with a wire or something that'll get up in there and we can get glue up underneath that brace. So that won't be easy but if we can get glue under the brace Pulling it up tight will be a piece of cake. Now the hardest thing, besides getting the glue in there, the hardest thing will be to accurately drill a hole down through this and through the brace. How in the world do I locate where that brace is? Well, that's gonna be the challenge of this particular fix. If you've watched my videos, you know that I always do the simple, quickest, easiest thing. I don't do things that are complicated. So I've never done this before, I promise you, not this way anyway. And I'm going to, this just happens to be one of those little uh, wire ties, that's all it is. It's flexible, that's the key thing. I've got two lines drawn right on here so that I can stay between those lines, keep my angle the same is what it, that, why that's important. 
and I'm, I'm holding it there, I'm touching the brace, and what I'm going to do, now this might be a little tricky, is I'm putting a pencil mark right here at the edge of this tape. Now if I pull this out, put it in the exact same place, then the brace should be right there, would be the corner of the brace. That would be the edge of the brace. That's my guess. I don't, you know, am I right? I don't know, but it looks, I would guess the brace further over than that, but it, you know, by looking, but that's the way it measures. So here we go. I'm going to try it again just to double check it. There, it measures in the same exact place. And it measures in the same exact place. So I'm going to say that that's right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this wire tie over where I've got the nub here and I'm hoping I can hook the other side of the brace and pull it back. I don't know if I can do that or not. It's hooking it but just barely. I'm putting a little mark on here again or I'm going to try to. It's not very easy to get a mark on this plastic but I've got a little tiny mark there that I'm going to keep my eye on so I don't lose my mark and put it in the same place. Now this time, uh, pulling it this way, I think this corner is where the brace would be so I'm going to put a mark about right there. So I've got a mark there and a mark there and, and the brace is approximately like that. It runs through at an angle so it's you know it's like this like that like that but anyway it's between those two marks it should be you know all we can do is what we can do I'm gonna try I'm gonna test that one again pulling it back until it catches and sure enough my mark lines up with my tape pull it back up there sure enough my mark now let's see there's my mark there's there's the yeah it does it matches up exactly so okay we're good I thought I screwed up there for a second, but uh, you know, I thought I made a mistake once, but I was wrong. Anyway, we're going to drill down through here, and, and actually that's a pretty good location, about right there. Um, it's a ways from the end of the brace, but this brace is loose a long ways around. So I have a feeling if I can drill a hole, um, I'm going to try to guess about where this is running through here. Actually, I don't have to guess. I could do the same thing right here again. And I'd have a better idea. I think I'll do that. I'll just put another little piece of tape here, and then that way I'll get in line. Because I'd like to drill the hole a little further this way. Okay, so let's just go through here again. And in this case, it's not quite as critical. I'm just I'm going to put a... I'll just put a mark right here at the corner of the F hole and I'll bring it back up here and I'm just trying to get a, a approximate alignment so the the brace should run through approximately right here and that way I can drill the hole a little further down this way which is where I would prefer to have the hole <clears throat> so you know if I line this up about like this of course, I'm not going to use this because it's not straight enough. But, but if I lined it up approximately like that, then I could, on this line, I could drill the hole hopefully anywhere along this line and, and go straight through that brace. Guys, I've never tried it before. It's a guess. It's the best guess I got. If we miss, we've got one extra hole in the top, you know. We're going to fill the hole anyway. We're going to use a very tiny drill bit, very tiny wire you will probably not even be able to see the hole when we're done. So the hole is not that significant. I know the furnace is running, but you heard the phone ring as I was drilling that hole, maybe. That was the owner of this mandolin telling me, don't drill a hole through the top. No, not really. He didn't say that. I'm, I'm kidding about that part. But it was the owner of the mandolin as I was drilling a hole through this. So he must be psychic, knowing that I was working on it. 
We hit it, we must have hit it exactly because I could feel the drill drilling all the way down through. So it, it must have hit the brace almost perfectly. At least that's my opinion or feel for it right now. You can see the hole is absolutely tiny. Even if we didn't fix it, we would probably not have a problem. You know, so the hole is very insignificant to the whole issue. So here's an E-string off the mandolin, and I'm going to just poke it down through the hole that we drilled. And it's the hole's just a little bigger than the string. It's not a whole lot bigger. And then when you get down in there, then you just kind of poke it on down and hope that it kind of comes out your direction. And if it doesn't come out your direction, you just keep poking it down in there till you till you see some wire. And if you don't see any wire, then you just reach in with a magnet like this. And eventually you'll get a wire. There it is. I got the wire. It wouldn't cooperate for nothing, especially on camera. So all I did was reach in the hole with this magnet and grab the wire. It's really simple. I don't think I caught that on video very well, but not much to see really anyway. Okay, so we got the wire all the way through the loop here. Got both ends of it. Now on this end, what we're going to do is tie on a little string nut, which I had laying right here a second ago too. This is probably best done with a pliers or something like that so that you get a really tight twist on it. Well, that's not working real good, to be honest. It just keeps on twisting. I think I'll loop it through the, the nut a couple of times. That'll help too. And then I'm going to somehow get a twist on this that's going to stay, which I'm, I've done this before. It wasn't that complicated, so I know I can do it. There we go. It's working now. Got quite a bit of twist on there now. I don't think you could pull that off of there if you tried. And I'm going to cut the loose end really close to the, to the string there. And I'm going to try to bend it where it doesn't uh, interfere with going back up through the hole. So actually this knot will be up inside the hole is really what's going to amount to this twisting part. The little tiny loose end, I've got it bent down so it'll pull up into the hole, I think. So here's, here's a close-up of what that looks like if you care to see it there. So it just kind of looks like a normal string in a way. And you could just use a normal string, but the problem is you have to feed the little end without the nut down through the hole. You'll never get it to feed up through there. So it, you're better off doing it the way I did it. You can do whatever you want, but that's the way I would recommend it. Now, I can see the loose end of, I mean, I can see my wrapping already coming up through the hole. So, obviously, it worked. Now, we will thread this through here. And I've got a loop on this end, so I've got way more string on this end than I need. But I'm going to leave, you know, a pretty good amount because I want a good wrapping around here. So, I'm leaving three or four inches, about three inches probably. And I'm going to thread it up through the hole. All this is is a string winder attached to a piece of plastic that I made with a hole through it. I mean, that's really all it boils down to. You could make your own. You could make it out of wood. You could make it out of almost anything. In hindsight, I kind of wish I'd have left a little bit more now. But I think I'll be fine. I just It's just a little harder to wrap it here than I was expecting. And it's only because it's on camera. If it wasn't on camera, this would work just no problem. Three hours later, after you get this tied on, you're good. There it is. Okay. All right, I'm through there a couple, I'm through there a wrap or so, and this is going to wrap around here two or three times. So it's going to be plenty strong. I'm not worried about that. And we'll tighten this down until we get it just snugged up. I don't want it tight yet by any stretch because we don't have glue on it yet. I just want to get this all ready to go before we get the glue on it because if it, it could be very difficult to do all this after you got your glue on there. All right, so this is what it looks like right now. 
we've got our we've got everything set up the wires down through there it, it if I tighten this up it would pull that brace right up to the top no problem whatsoever and because it's a tuning key it doesn't back off just like it doesn't back off on your guitar so it's when you tighten it it's going to get tight and stay tight so now our trick is let's make up a device to get glue in there that's the only other hard part to do now I was hoping I would have a paintbrush that I could reach up in there and get glue up in there under that crack this one you would think would do it but it's the the brace is too close to this hole and this doesn't give me any room to manipulate and move so I'm going to take another no count paintbrush here and see if I can melt it and I don't know that I can and bend it I'm just gonna try it I haven't tried this right here before but just trying to see if it'll bend it well it got flexible so let's see I don't want to break it well that may have been all we need to do right there that was pretty painless let's see if that'll reach up in there oh yeah yep I think that'll do it I think it will I'm still going to be kind of flying blind here so I'm going to try to rig up my camera on my tablet where I can see where I'm putting the glue because it's really going to be nearly impossible to see this. By the way, because I know somebody will ask, this drill bit that I used to drill that hole through the top, when I measure it, it is 46 thousandths of an inch. Now 46 thousandths of an inch is about one millimeter. Actually it's a hair over a millimeter, but if you used a one millimeter uh, bit you'd be doing real well. And for our inch friends who uh, 46 thousandths aren't familiar with that, the easiest way to think of that is... <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. I was going to say the easiest way to think of that is to uh, just think that it's 46% uh, it's of a tenth of an inch. <laughs> One millimeter is so much more complicated. <laughs> anyway, that's what it is. Okay, hopefully you can see the screen there. And I'm trying to hold that with my left hand so that you can see it. You can see there's the ferrule that, uh, and the string that went right through the brace. Went perfectly through the brace, in fact. Almost dead center. And my biggest problem is holding the camera still with my left hand. So if it doesn't stay still, sorry. Now I'm going to take my right hand and dip it in the glue and for the paintbrush. And I'm going to go down inside here and back up inside here, as you can see, and have no clue where I'm going. Ah, oh, that's really hard. To try to do that on camera is just almost impossible. Wow, harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's just a big mess. It's just leaving a big mess. It's not backwards exactly, it's just hard to do. The paintbrush reaches up in there pretty good, but it doesn't, doesn't work as good as you would hope it would work to get it in there. There, I got it down. I'm in the crack there, see? I'm in the crack there now. That's what you want. Let me see if I can just wipe up some of this glue that's on there and get it up in the... Wow. What a, what a hard thing to do. Ah, the paintbrush won't reach up in there. That's my problem. I've got to put more of a bend on it. So I'm going to do that as quick as I can here. Okay, nothing like having to do other work while you're in something like this, but uh, I had to. I had to put more of a bend on the uh, paintbrush and that seemed to help a lot. That was part of my problem it looks like. And the other part of my problem is getting this camera where I want it. So I'm going to have to try to put more of a bend on this camera and clean get it in there a little bit better. It's just really hard to hold it. There we go. That's much better for me. Now maybe I can hold the camera with one hand and the paintbrush with the other. Now I can get up in there. 
I couldn't get up in there before. Okay, now we're actually painting the crack. We're getting, getting, doing a little bit better now. Try to get rid of uh, that extra glue there if I can. And I think I'm getting some of it in that crack now. It's not perfect by any stretch, guys, but when you're doing something like this through a tight space like this, it ain't easy, I can tell you. I'm not too worried about making a mess. We'll try to come back and clean the mess up after we have it tight. I think I'm getting it in places pretty good, but other places not so good. I'm going to try to get way back there toward the far end if I can. That's hard to do. And I'm holding the very tip end of the paintbrush. Wow, that's hard to do. And hard to hold the camera. And there it is. There it is. And you can see the brace moving too as I get in there. Try that again. There it is. There it is. I'll tell you what, I think I've covered it pretty good, really. It's about as good as a guy can do on circumstances like this. And I think I've got all the way to the end of it there based on what that looked like. All right, so let's just see what happens if I tighten this crank down now. If I start to tighten that down, I think, and I don't know if I can do it with one hand and keep the camera focused. That's the problem. <laughs> it doesn't want to do this. I think I'm turning it the right way. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to start to see it tighten up there and squeeze out here. And just, yep, there it goes. It's starting to tighten up. And hopefully we'll see squeeze out. Yeah, starting to see a little squeeze out. Not much, but there's some. There, it's getting tight. Yeah, there's some more squeeze out. It's, uh, you can see how it's tightened up, and there went some more squeeze out. That's not too bad. Don't want to break the string, but I really want to tighten it up pretty tight. It's getting pretty tight. Well, that's probably about as good as it's going to get with this approach. I'm going to get in there now with a cloth and try to clean up some of that glue. That ain't going to be easy either. Actually, I'll probably just use the same paintbrush with, in water and just get in there and wash it and just keep cleaning the paintbrush. That's about the only thing I can do, so I'm going to try that cleaning up a spot on the inside of the back that fell down that I can see through the sound hole. Pretty much got it already. Just cleaning it up a little bit better. Okay, so let's go back up to the surface there. That's not doing too bad a job. At least it's not leaving big globs in there like we have. Yeah, we're doing all right. It's not perfect, but for the method we're using, it's a pretty good method. And I remember some of those big glumps were already in there. That big glob right there was already there, so I can't get that out of there. But I'm getting almost all of my slop out of there, believe it or not. There'll probably be a little bit left. A lot of that's dried glue from long time ago but I think I've really got my part almost clean it's not perfect didn't expect it to be perfect but it's not bad considering what we had to go through to do it and that didn't take very long so I hope you enjoyed seeing how I did that here we are with the mandolin I've already got the camera inside you can see here on the screen there's the brace We'll bring you around here where you can see the screen a little better. 
I'm going to actually, I kind of wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing here at the same time. And uh, I'm getting ready to loosen up the uh, wire and you know we can watch the brace then to see if the brace holds there. I think it's going to hold but then again I don't know because it was hard to tell if we were getting glue up in there. Okay it's already loose and nothing moved on the inside so we're looking good so far. I'm just loosening it up some more. This is now this is very loose you can see and I see nothing moving inside there. I'm just going to take a little wire clipper here and just go ahead and nip off the wire on the outside so I can get this out of my way. Now the wire is still sticking through. I'm going to see if the nippers will push the wire down through or if the glue's got it stuck. No, it, it actually went down through. I'm kind of surprised. kind of thought it would be stuck. But you can see the if you're watching the screen here you can see the bead came down. I'm trying to get the camera back in the best place there. It's very hard to manipulate that camera from the outside here. But there you can see it's sticking down about a quarter inch. I'm going to go ahead and push the wire on down through there if it'll go. It's not going but... Huh. Well... Huh. I may have to... The wire's not going. I don't know why it's not going exactly. Hoping I can push it the rest of the way down through there. It's loose on the inside, you can see, but it, for some reason it's gotten stuck right there and it doesn't want to go any further. I think it's the little wire end there on my, up here above the mandolin. I'm going to just cut it off and maybe it'll fall on through then. I thought just knocking it back and forth would eventually make it come down, but it's it's loose, but it's still just hanging there. There must be just some little snag of wire hanging on it or something. Oh well, I'll get that out one way or the other. But it does look like the brace itself is holding, at least for now. We'll have to put the strings on it and see if it's still holding. Well, if I'd have had that little tool there to begin with, it would have been easy to reach in there and just pull that out of there. That's what I did. So anyway, it came out no problem. Now we do have a little tiny hole there, obviously, but the hole is pretty small. So we can fill that, dye it, and you know, I don't even think you'll see it. As a matter of fact, it's kind of funny. There just happens to be a matching speck right there that's not a hole. I did not do that. And so this, you know, it just kind of matches across there. Kind of odd. And there's there's even some more. I think this has got, it, this actually does have these little distress marks in there. So, you know, if I just darken it up, I doubt you'd ever notice it because it matches these other little, little dark spots that are on the mandolin. I think this was intentionally distressed. I think you can see that in the wood there. It's it's distressed to make it look old and so that's what those little marks are and therefore if I just darken that up I doubt you'll even be able to tell it. But I think I'll go ahead and fill it and then darken it. A viewer sent me this Timbermate wood filler and it's really nice. He says I should use it for pore filler also but I don't know that seemed weird to use that whole thing on a great big instrument you know uh, to use to spread that all over the whole instrument seems like I don't know it just doesn't seem like pore filler to me but you know he claims it works so I'm sure it probably would it's very very good wood filler I like it a lot I'm not sure I would like it for pore filler though especially on woods that you're not going to stain you can, they say you can get it to match the wood, but I doubt you're going to find anything that's going to match Paduke. Well, I've touched it up now. Can you see the hole now? That's it right there. You can see it, but you got to really be looking for it. It doesn't stand out near as well as the other little marks that are there on purpose. So, um, let's string it up and see if the brace holds. 
Well, hopefully you can see that we have the mandolin up to pitch there. If you're familiar with playing a mandolin, just doing that, you can tell it's up to pitch. So, let's go inside and make sure that it's still holding, and it looks like it is. As far as I can tell, it looks fine. There is still a lot of old glue there that uh, was done from another time, but uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like it's holding just fine. Because it was loose all the way back up here to that big glob of stuff. It was loose too. And that's you can see that it's connected back to the main glob that it used to be connected to. So it's, it's all, it's up as far as it used to be. Let's put it that way. And it seems to be holding. There's no way to know with absolute certainty that that will hold forever. I expect it will hold just fine, but... I can't guarantee it because of the fact that I couldn't get in there and clean it out wood to wood, you know. So, but the tight bond I have a lot of faith in. I think it'll hold it. If it doesn't hold it, everything I do is guaranteed. So if it doesn't hold it, here's the guarantee that I would give the customer. And that is, you know, whatever his bill is this time, and it's not that much. It's I'm sure it's under $100. Whatever his bill is, if, if we, you know, next time, if it breaks and he needs to have it fixed again, we'll pretend like he never had it fixed by me the first time. And I'll do the repair, whatever it takes, take the back off, fix it the correct way, whatever it needs. Do the whole thing. And then whatever that bill turns out to be, we'll deduct this bill from that. And that would be just as if I had never done this first thing then. So, you know, that way he doesn't, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the only kind of guarantee you can make on something like this. But it's just, uh, you know, the only problem is that the inconvenience for the customer having to bring it back twice if that would happen to break. But this saves him a ton of money if it holds and, uh, you know, and I think it will. It'll probably be just fine. So let's just see a little bit what it sounds like now that it's uh, repaired and, and back in shape. pretty good well i hope you enjoyed that quick fix if you're not already a subscriber please do so now click that subscribe button and then after you click the subscribe button there'll be a bell icon right about in the same location click that also and that way you'll be notified of future videos thank you so much for watching tell your friends